Good morning, and welcome to another Breakfast with Unity. So, what are we doing today? So, we're doing some true awful zero-G to start with. We might do some more with zero-G later and actually make it less awful, but today we're just going to make it like the real world, where if you apply force, it you go forever. You've got no... You got no friction. You got nothing. You just you just keep rotating or keep flying forever. So, to start off, let's create a folder. Let's call this thing fourteen zero G. Oh yeah, zero G. Let's just call it that for now, and put it so that it's on its own layer there. Cool. And um, and we're gonna start with the new blank scene. The first thing that we're gonna do is uh, um. Hold on, my dog's trying to come into my room. Hey, Sassy, can you... Hold on. Can you please leave? Sorry about that. Alright. So, um... As I was saying... We're starting with a blank, blank slate. We're going to do project settings. What are we going to do? We're going to go to render settings and we're going to give it a skybox so that we have some reference for rotation. Um, and the skybox we're going to use is just one that we already have in the project, which is going to be... I've got a few different options here. Um, I'm going to go with uh, the one that's actually intended to be a skybox, which is grid skybox. There we go. And... Um, what are we going to do next? Uh, so we, we also need to know where we are positionally. So I'm going to, uh, we're just going to pretend the main ca camera is us for right now. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about, uh, about it, uh, having a body or anything at this very moment. So we're going to create a, what are we doing? We're going to create a particle system though. And we're going to use this as a point of reference. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create it as a cube, as a box. We're going to make it, uh, let's make it 30 by 30 by 30. Let's make it so all the particles have no speed. Um, let's make it so that their lifetime is considerably longer, like 50. And let's make the duration 50. And, um, yeah, we'll just do this for now. And then we're going to make sure that the simulation space is set to world, and that way we can attach this to the main camera. And wherever we go, we'll have some particles as reference. They'll be popping in left and right, but this will at least give us a reference. So I'm going to center it over the camera. So now if we were to move forward or backward in space, we would see because of the particles that are spawning in. Actually, I'm going to have them pre-warm. Let's, uh, if we do, where is pre-warm? There it is, pre-warm. So now if we hit play, there'll already be a lot of particles there to work with. Cool. So, uh, what are we doing? We need to make some basic zero-g movements. So let's start with the motion. So, um, we're going to call this, uh, zero-g, um, movement. Our camera is going to need to have a mass and a, uh, and so that means we need to give it a rigid body. And, uh, so if we just hit play right now, does this cause any problems because we have a rigid body that's weird? Okay, so that worked. Um, we're actually falling right now because we have gravity. We don't want gravity because this is specifically zero G, so definitely don't want gravity. There we go. Cool. So what we're going to do now is, uh, I think I'm going to make the spawn rate on these particles a little bit higher too. Let's go to emission, make it one. That way, let's, let's test the gravity check again. So if we turn on gravity, we have some motions to work with so you can see how it looks. Oh, we get going too fast, it's hard to see the particles, but it does still show motion. That's that's the point, right? So, let's save the scene before we forget. Zero G. And we're going to put this on to, into the zero G folder. So, script time. Zero G movement. So, let's just start with horizontal and forward movement. So, um... Uh, we're going to call for, we're going to create a string, 
string forward axis name equals uh, what do we want to call this? Actually, we will probably want to call this uh, vertical as the default because we're going to be using WASD to move around. So string um, horizontal axis name equals horizontal. We might add a, uh, a real vertical axis at some point too, but we're not going to do that just yet. And then all we're going to do is in fixed update, because we're doing physics-y stuff, might as well have some other stuff here. Public float uh, force equals, let's just default that to 100, F, and public force mode. Actually, we want these public as well. Public, public. Uh, I thought it was just force mode. There we go, force mode, force mode. So we can pass that through. Even though we're probably gonna leave that just as the default force. So um, all we have to do here is um, rigidbody.addForce. And we will do it in um, the vector direction of. So let's do. Let's actually calculate the outside of here first. So vector three force direction equals um, new vector three. And the x will be uh, get input dot get axis horizon, uh, horizontal axis name. Um, we don't care about the y, so we'll just put 0 0.0f for right now. And z will be um, input dot get axis uh, vertical, uh, sorry, uh, forward. Axis name for some reason it's not completed that one though it completed the other one just fine well um, So now we have this as a force direction, but we also want this to be normalized so dot normalized So now we can do add force in our force direction um, And Add force force direction and um, We'll just pass in force mode, lowercase one, that's not showing up in my list. And uh, so force direction, force mode, and we need to multiply in our force. So if we hit save here, and hit play, we won't notice anything because we didn't attach the script. So we're going to attach the script to our main camera, and we're going to hit play. And if we hit forward, oh wow, that's more force than I was expecting. That sent us going real good. So uh, first of all, yeah, force mode is force. Let's make this, uh, let's make it like 10 force. I think actually part of it may be, yeah, we've got very little mass here, but that, that's fine, we'll adjust that later. Um, so now we've got a little bit of force. So if I strafe left and we just keep going in whatever direction, so you can kind of like adjust yourself by very, slight little bursts, just kind of like you've seen in a spacewalk, if you've ever seen someone use use the uh, those little backpacks, they, they have very gentle, just psh, 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 with, if we were having sounds it would actually make more sense psh, 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 psh. and actually the reason that we're having trouble with the particle system right now is because we're making too many particles, we're making them faster than we have room for them, so let's make it really dense Let's make the particle smaller though. Let's make the start size like 0.1. There we go. So now we have... We're still running out of particles. Let's make the lifetimes shorter. Let's do 10 and 10. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I want to make them just a little bit bigger because I don't think they're showing up very well on your guys' screens. So let's make them point three. Yeah, cool. So we have space motion. 
Sweet. So now we just need rotation. And this is where it gets real vomit inducing. So we're gonna I'm gonna duplicate zero G movement, we're gonna call this zero G rotation. So we're gonna call this uh, vertical access name, and this time we're gonna do mouse Y as the default, and horizontal access name will be mouse X. And this one's going to be G rotation. Let's uh, let's go ahead and make the default 10 because we had way too much fun with 100 before. So I'm just going to change on both of them. Remember, this doesn't change anything in the scene. If you've already got something instantiated, it will have whatever it was at. So, so now we have to do rotational force. So um, let's see what it's going to be called. I think it's rigid body dot add. Add torque, it looks like. So let's give this a shot. So, so we're going to do force direction. Does this make sense anymore? Yeah, I don't think it does. So I'm going to do this as two separate add forces just because I'm not quite sure how these are going to work uh, so that we can just make a combined value. So we're just going to do two separate add forces for right now. Um, so we're going to do uh, rigidbody.add torque and the torque will be... How, how do these set up? Okay, cool. So it's basically exactly the same as add force. Just we're torquing. So um, for our vertical axis we want to be torquing around the x axis I believe so what we want is uh, transform dot right times uh, force times mouse uh, sorry uh, horizontal wait get, uh, input dot get axis horizontal axis name So we do that, and remember we don't need time dot delta time because add force and add torque automatically have that uh, built into them. So keep that in mind. Um, and then we're going to do one along the uh, uh, vertical axis, and this one's going to be uh, around. So this will be around the. So wait, no, this should be the vertical. So the horizontal. So. If we're rotating along the, that would be along the Y. So we actually want transform dot up here, and we want transform dot right here. So let's see if this does anything close to what we want. So um, we're going to put this onto our main camera. We're going to hit play, and now, oh yeah, it's awful. I'm trying to correct for it. Okay, so the control's a little inverted. All right, there we go. So. We apply very gentle motion, so left, right. Okay, so the axes are inverted. Um, is that because of our input settings? Let's see the input here. If we go to a vertical, wait, vertical's not it. We want mouse, where's the normal mouse X, mouse Y, there we go, mouse X, mouse Y. So mouse Y is not inverted, so we shouldn't have inverted style, so. Um, all we have to do is just make this a negative, so just do negative transform right. Put a negative anywhere in there and it'll work. So, so if we hit play, just don't put two negatives because it'll negate each other. That didn't fix our problem, did it? I negated the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, we want the one for the vertical axis. Save. So the reason that this is right, even though this is a vertical axis, is because this is the axis you're rotating around. So keep that in mind. It's a little bit different. That's the reason I couldn't just like math them together, even though it's a very similar concept. I just didn't want to deal with that. There we go. That feels right. So now we have um, movement up. Our movement's wrong. Oh, that's real confusing. So uh, it doesn't. It's like our head was detached from it. So zero G movement. So we actually don't want this to be the direct vector here. So there's two ways we could fix this. We could either make it so that this uh, does a transform dot forward times horizontal and transform dot a two stepper here, 
Or we could just rotate our force direction in by multiplying in our uh, current rotation. So if we do, I always get this wrong, so just bear with me here. Um, if we do transform times force direction, I think this will not work. And I was wrong, of course. So, so let's see if this fixed it. So if I go forward, oh, we're going forward. Yep, we're in true zero G. I'm strafing. Yep, we've got true zero G movement. 15 minutes. Super easy. So I was worried that one of these can't be on the right hand side. So I guess this transfer rotation has to be on the left hand side. What I mean by that is if we multiply transfer rotation and at the end, even though it seems like that should be valid because we're so used to the commutative property of, of multiplication, it doesn't work in this case because the way that uh, quaternions and vectors interact only goes one direction in code. So save, hit play. Let's just make sure it still works. Yay, still works. Cool. So, true, horrible, zero-g movement. Um, on the next episode, we'll probably play around with this again, except for we'll add niceties like um, the ability to slow down with a button press or, or reorient yourself. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully you had a good episode and um, enjoyed the episode or whatever. We had a good episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And um, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire, that's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. And um, donate to the show. We've got a Patreon page, yada, yada, yada. Have a good one, and I'll see you tomorrow in the morning with some more Breakfast with Unity and in the evening with um, uh, Fight Go Right. So have a good one, and see you later.